All right, everybody, let the fun begin. Uh, this entire chapter, we're looking at probability and counting. Uh, again, we had to modify things because we had so many snow days this year. So we're going to do basically three videos for each day. There's three topics covered. You'll have a worksheet. The worksheet is to be done um, as best you can, and you can do as much or as little as you need to feel like you are successful with the content. And then the following day, um, you'll be responsible for practicing, asking questions. At the end of the hour, we'll take 15 minutes to take a homework quiz. All right, so that's kind of protocol over the next few days. There's no assigned homework, but just understand that there will be a 10-point homework quiz each day regarding the material. So it's important to watch the video and practice problems so that you can be successful on the material. All right, first topic we're looking at, fundamental counting principle. Um, big thing here, all right, we're just counting, all right? So in this situation here, you can kind of see, we have three shirts, a pair of pants and shorts, and a pair of shoes. So as we're counting this event, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the one of each, essentially a combination. So if I start with my shoes, I'm gonna start with shoes just because there's one option there. What happens is I have two choices for pants. I can wear my pants, or I can wear my shorts. And then keep in mind with each of those, I have three different shirts that are possible. So when you look at this, I'm just going to label these one, two, and three, one, two, and three. So when we look at the total number of outfits you can create with one shoe, one pair of pants or shorts, and one shirt, there are six total outcomes. So the fundamental counting principle is all about this idea. So we don't have to draw a tree diagram every single time, all right? The fundamental counting principle says you take each of the number of outcomes and you just multiply it together. And that will be the total number of outcomes in that combined event, all right? So as we move forward and we look at, you know, the situation where we're rolling two dice, all right? We have two uh, standard six-sided dice over here off to the right to give you kind of a visual. There's six sides on each dice, so if I roll them together, there's six outcomes on the first, six on the second. So how many total outcomes are possible? 36. All right. If I have a 10-question uh, true-false quiz, I have true or false on the first, which is two options. Two options on the second, true or false. Two options on the third. Da, 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 da. Two options on the tenth. So when you're looking at this problem, we have two options for ten questions. And what is two to the tenth? One thousand twenty-four. Again, all we do is we take the number of outcomes for each event, and then we're multiplying them together. All right. Same on question C. We have a twenty-five multiple choice question. There's four options, A through D, on the exam. How many total outcomes or how many ways are there to answer this test? Well, we have four options on the first, four on the second, four on the third, four on the fourth, all the way to four, or the 25th question, where there are also four options. We multiply all of those numbers together. We wind up with four to the 25th, which equals 1.126 times 10 to the 15th. And you guys, this unit, it is okay to use scientific notation when you have large numbers like that. All right, continuing right along, we'll look at uh, just a couple applications here outside of dice. Again, we're looking to multiply the number of events together. So we're looking at look. So again, as we're working here, looking at a few different examples, uh, it says how many plates are possible if letters and numbers cannot be repeated. Um, we're actually going to look at the example where they can be repeated. Um, sorry, that's my stylus is not working too hot right now. All right, so we have three letters followed by three numbers. We know there's 26 letters in the alphabet. And we know we have the options of 0 through 9, which is 10. All right, fundamental counting principle says we multiply all those together. So we'd wind up with 17,576,000 different license plates combinations based on that information. Now I understand um, we could have letters in front of 
or numbers in front of letters as well, that would be another 17,576,000 plates. So essentially there's endless opportunities for license plates in the state of Minnesota. Another example is vanity plates. Most of you have probably seen them on the road. They look something like this, where you create some sort of word or phrase or whatever you want in your license plate. We're going to look at five character plates. So you have five places to put letters or numbers. All right. So when we think about that, how many options are available? Well, between letters and numbers, there's 36 options for each. Keep in mind, you could repeat. And I understand the Department of Transportation limits some options there. As far as things go, you won't be able to use every combination because they, you know, spell naughty words or whatever. But just in this case, if we're looking at the total number, we have 36 to the fifth power. We wind up with 60,466,176 different five-character vanity plates that are possible. 